chapter 8 verse 28 and it says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose now we jump to Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 it says to whom God would make known what is what the richest can you say it what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Very good. Now in Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, it says, come on, read together with me. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory let's give the lord a hand of praise for that amen praise the lord amen this is our blessed hope today we are going to enter into a study that is going to touch and change your life we are going to tackle the answer to the questions why am i here why where am i heading do i really matter what is the purpose of my life? What is the purpose of my salvation? With the verses we have just read in the book of Colossians, which says, the mystery, what is the mystery? Christ in you. Where is Christ? In me. In me. Amen. Very good. What? The hope of glory. Yeah. When Christ, who is your life. Amen. When we got saved, we have received, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, in our lives, in our spirits. His life was planted in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is where the fulfillment of the name Emmanuel, because the name Emmanuel, one of the name of God, which means God with us. Amen? God with us the very life of Jesus Christ in us. For almost 47 years in the ministry, I have counseled and talked to many Christians who were struggling or who were groping in their Christian life. They kept asking, now what? After accepting or receiving Christ, after being saved, now what? I used to be on fire with my Christian life, they said. And it seems now, I don't know where I am. I'm at a loss. You know what? Ignorance. Hallelujah. Okay. Ignorance of the purpose of the life of Christ in us. I think something is wrong with this mic. Can we change it? Okay. Okay, ignorance of the purpose of the life of Christ in us is a great blockade of the revelation of the utmost goal, plan, and purpose of our salvation. We have a life within us, and that life is the life of Jesus Christ. And that life within us must have its full expression in order to fulfill the purposes of God in our lives. Many times we are not aware that Jesus is within us. Isn't it? Because we are very much focused on ourselves or on things around us or on situations or even those things that are in us that are not pleasing to God that may hinder 
the full expression of his life in us. These are the words of the flesh. These are irritations, anger, disbelief, or struggles in life. To better understand this, we need to know the outworking of the whole man and also the outworking of the life of Jesus in us. Now, let us consider how man was made. How man was made. In Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Do you know that the Father, God, okay, is tripart being, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And man to us are tripart being, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Amen. Now, let's go to man. What is man? Man consists of a body and a soul and a spirit. Okay, what is in the body of man? Seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and touching. Okay, these are the five senses of man, the body of man. Now, we have a soul, isn't it? Now, what consists the soul? Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Okay, now let's study about the mind. What is the mind? It's the battleground. The mind is the battleground. This is where the outworking of the enemy is very active. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, just a brother just passed by. He just looked at you and then you, in your mind, okay, the enemy will use your mind. Look, he didn't even say hi to you. And then your emotions will be attacked by the enemy. And then you would agree, yeah, I didn't do anything to him, you know? That's the outworking, hello? The battle Amen, the battleground, okay? And then the will, what is the will? The will is the office of the human government. That's why it's called the will. The will is the one who decides either he will obey God or he will obey the dictates of the flesh or the enemy, okay? That's why, oh yeah, he didn't, he didn't say hi to me. So you yield to the flesh, okay? We didn't even know that that brother is in a hurry. Hello? Amen? So that's the will. The will decides to whom uh, he, will, uh, he will obey, okay? It's like, you know, the pendulum. pendulum. Sometimes the will will yield to the Spirit of God. Sometimes the, yield, the will will yield to the flesh or the enemy. Now we go to the emotions. The emotions, these are our feelings. But most of our time, our emotions are our greatest liars. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, you, you wake up in the morning and then you feel so heavy. And then, oh, I am sick. I don't have strength. I think I have to rest. That is what? Our emotions, okay? And then you will remember the things of the past. Oh, that, that lady, I cannot forgive that lady. I remember what she has done to me. So these are the work of the emotion. Now, the spirit of man. The spirit of man was inactive when we were not yet saved. Okay, but became active and alive again when we have received the Lord as our Lord and Savior. Do you understand that? Yes. Oh, only five understood. Do you understand that? Yes. Amen. I think six. Do you understand that? Amen. 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 Okay. 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 And okay, it became alive when we have received or accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Then his life has quickened our spirit within us. So our spirit came alive. Amen. So the spirit of man, what is in the spirit of man? Is our conscience, our awareness to God, our intuition, 
our communication to God, our intimacy with Him, and other attributes such as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, during high school, I'm not saved yet, you know, um, I, I curse, okay? <laughs> it's just nothing to me. It's like I'm just eating peanuts, okay? Minamani mani ko lang, okay? Ang pagmumura, okay? So, I don't have any conviction. Because I, 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 don't, I don't know. But when I got saved, okay, I started to do it again, but I can't do it. Something within me is hindering me to do it, and that is the Spirit of God. Amen. So do you understand that? And then I became aware. I became aware that there is a God, a true God that is so alive. You know why? Because He, he started changing me from glory to glory. Then there is this intuition and communication and intimacy started a relationship with him all these are the attributes of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and it concerns our relationship with the Lord okay now we have to let that life within our spirit grow did you hear that Amen? So that the soul and the body will be able to overcome those things that are not pleasing to God. You know, sometimes there are uh, Christians that they have been Christians for five years or eight years, even ten years. And they don't even change. To them, going to church, listening to the word of God is just a casual thing. But when the word of God when the Spirit of God hits you, okay, you cannot help it but change. Isn't it? Because you will feel that strong conviction. You will feel the reality of Jesus. You will feel the reality and the power of the, of the Word of God when you start to hear the Word of God. Before you were, you were just there, you know, just, you know, reporting for duty. Like that. Just sitting and then listening and then the, the, the way you came in is the way you go back home. Nothing changed. But you, it won't be long. You keep attending. You keep listening. Because it says there's power in the word of God. Yes. And little by little, you know, God begins to speak to your spirit. And then you get what? You get what? Convicted. And then why did I do that? Lord, forgive me. Okay. Now, everything starts with the five senses of the body. Okay. Everything comes into your mind. And then it's, it registered into your soul, which is where the five senses is. Then the mind will influence your emotions. Then the mind and our emotions will influence our will to yield to the dictates of the flesh or the body or to yield to the dictates of the Holy Spirit that is yielded to God. It is either the will of the flesh or the will of the Spirit of Christ in us. Amen. So we have to draw within. What is the meaning of drawing within? If you are faced in a situation that you need to decide, okay? Especially, you know what? Don't trust your emotions. Don't trust your emotions. Like, like uh, somebody uh, said something to you and, and you got offended and that person doesn't even know. And then uh, when, you, when you're alone in your room, you keep remembering what that person did to you. And then your emotions will dictate you. See? Remember what, what, what that person did to you? She looked at you that way. And then she didn't even say thank you. You know? You know? These, these things are happening. These are simple things. But it kept coming. Coming. Because this is the enemy trying to let you yield to your flesh. 
and letting that emotion grow until there will be anger. So every time you see that person, you are angry, and that person doesn't even know. Hello? So you know what? Every time, you need to be sensitive with the emotions that are working within you. So every time that kind of emotion works within you, okay, draw within your spirit and say, God, is this, is this for you or not? As you recall who God is, and then you would say, in the name of Jesus, I will resist this. Because it says in the Bible, resist the enemy, and he will flee away from you. You have to resist it. And as you resist it, okay, you will be an overcomer on all the things that the enemy is putting in your mind. Amen. So we have to draw within to be aware of the life of Jesus in us. And be always conscious that he lives within you. Let that life grow through the word of God, through prayer, and through your intimacy with the Lord. What is intimacy with the Lord? Having a relationship with the Lord. You know, maybe you will say, Pastor, it's hard. How can I have a relationship with somebody I do not see? I tell you. Even if you do not see the Lord, He is so real. He is so real. I started having this intimacy with I talked to Him. At first, I just talk and talk and talk. Okay? When, when I'm sad, I said, Lord, I'm so sad today. Please help me overcome. I keep, I keep doing this until finally, deep within my spirit, I heard that still small voice of the Lord. And if you get accustomed to that still small voice of the Lord, you know what? You will change. And you will be strengthened within. Your spirit will grow bigger than your flesh. And then God will lead you wherever you go. You will hear him. Now through worship, fellowship, and most of all by learning to deny ourselves taking up our cross and follow Messiah Jesus wherever he leads us, whether in suffering or blessing. We don't care anymore because all we care about is the Lord. And he will pull us through even in suffering, even in problems that you, the way you see it, oh, there is no solution. But the word of God said with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen? Come on, you can do more than that. Amen. Give him glory. Now, let me ask you. Have you been in a situation that you cannot do anything anymore? And in your heart, in your mind, you have done everything and you know it will not be able to happen. Have you been in that situation? Can I see? I have been. Can I see your hands? Come on, up high. Yeah. I have been. You know, with God, nothing is impossible. I tell you, we have been in the ministry almost 47 years. With God, nothing is impossible. We are living in a city and we only have Tuyo, you know Tuyo, the dried fish. We don't even have gas on our, on our stove. So we barbecue the Tuyo, okay, the dried fish <laughs> At the, in our backyard. But our neighbor is a captain of the U.S. Navy and he's having party and they're barbecuing a big cow. Okay, <laughs> roasting a cow. Okay, and I can smell steak. Okay, <laughs> and to you, you know, the awful smell of to you. But you know what? A, a missionary friend is living with us. Her name is Daisy. She's a close friend of mine. And then she's finding the, the to you. Okay, and then I kept saying, Lord, thank you, oh God. Hmm, 
delicious steak, I said. Lord, please give us a cow. Imagine, I said cow. I forgot, I, I should have said roasted, or roasted cow. So I kept, I kept, we, we kept shouting and laughing and laughing. Suddenly, we are at the backyard. Remember, we are at the backyard. Suddenly, a live cow went in, and then we are here barbecuing, and then this live cow is, is behind us and said, <laughs> we jump and we run. We don't know what to do. We are living in a city. And you know, I shoo away the cow. Yeah, I shoo away the cow. And then we, we're trying to push him out from that small gate, where our small gate. So we push him so hard because he cannot fit until we, and he was crying like that until we finally push him out. And then it dawned on me when we, we, are, we are looking at the cow like this, walking on, on the street of our subdivision, and I said, wait, how can that cow got inside? Isn't it? Yeah. When he cannot fit on that small gate. And then we ran after the cow. Oh, that cow came from God. It's, it's for us. <laughs> but you know what? We just let him go away. See, all these things are happening. I tell you, with God, nothing is impossible. Mark that down in your heart and in your mind. Even in impossible situations, God can do, can do, can do the miracle. God can do the miracle. Imagine, I, I've been telling this over and over again, but for those who are new here, my husband died of rheumatic heart. And uh, I saw the monitor went flat. And I was hugging my son, we were both crying, I know he's dead. And, and the nurses and the doctors are trying to revive him. They're doing this, how do you call that? CPR. CPR, okay. And then I was crying and then I, I, I was, my, my head is bowed down, but it dawned on me. Because when he got saved, okay, the moment he got saved, he fasted for one week. After the fasting, God took him to heaven. And God showed that my family, all my family are safe, his family are safe. During that time, we only have one son. And then he saw two girls, two beautiful girls. And then he asked the Lord, Lord, who are those two, two beautiful girls? They're going to be your daughters. How can he die when we don't have the daughters yet? Isn't it? It dawned on me. So I said, Lord, this, this death is not coming from you. It is coming from Satan trying to steal the destiny of my husband and the destiny of my daughters. You know what I did? I pushed all those nurses and doctors with this. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of death, death, death. I said, and then the monitor went, Ting. You have to realize, okay, when you got saved, you're not alone. When you got saved, okay, you're not weak. When you got saved, you're not faithless. Okay. You have a God, our Lord Jesus Christ, that is always with you and in you. He is here in our hearts. In whatever situation we are in, good or bad, he never changed. He's always there. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we could ask for. Keep believing. Keep believing. Keep believing. All things are possible in him. Don't trust your emotions. Hello? Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. We have to draw within, okay? Okay. Now, also what? Okay, we, we need to be always conscious that he lives within us. Let that life grow through the word, through prayer, through intimacy, through relationship, through trusting him, through what? Trusting the word of God, through worship, fellowship, and most of all, by learning to deny ourselves. Take up our cross and follow Messiah Jesus wherever he leads us. Don't worry. If you will go to so many challenges in life, we have been, oh, you know what, challenges upon challenges, but above all, he is faithful. Amen. 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 Wherever he leads us, whether in suffering or blessing, we don't care because he has been true. He has been so real in our lives. I cannot deny a true God that lives within me who is so powerful and so alive. Amen. You have to trust him that way. We have to learn to die to self. Less of me, Lord. More of you in me. More of Christ's life in me. I want to be filled with the life of God. I want to be a walking nuclear bomb. Okay. <laughs> Meaning full of the power, full of the life of God, so alive in Him. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know what? In Galatians 2.20, okay? This is our favorite verse. Uh, we told our children if we die, that's what they will put on our <laughs> on our grave, okay? Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by what? By the faith. What is faith? It's believing on things that you do not see. You are in a, in a situation, you know, that you think it will, it will not be answered, but still you keep on believing, <coughs> believing that with God all things are possible. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not only by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. What a wonderful relationship. You know, loving God, I tell you, you will have that joy unspeakable, full of glory. Even, you know, in times, you, you know, of scarcity, okay, kakulangan sa buhay, of scarcity, don't worry. Okay? You know what I will say? Lord Jesus, you're in my heart. Spring up, oh well, I said. <laughs> spring up, oh well. Because when that well will spring up, it will be overflowing. And he does. He does. We live from miracles upon miracles upon miracles for 47 years. God is alive. I want you to realize that God is alive. I want you to be aware of him. I want you to know he is inside of you. And talk to him and through the power of the Holy Spirit, let the Spirit of God have liberty in controlling your whole life. Okay, Galatians 2.20, the cross life. Now whether we like it or not, we have to face the cross. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now what is the cross? What does dying to self mean? It means we have to die, deny, or even resist those things that are not pleasing to God, such as the works of the flesh. Okay? What is one of the works of the flesh? No. Chismis. Okay. <laughs> Marites, okay, yes. chismis, amen. Gossip, okay, what else? 
Can you give me one of the works of the flesh? Lost. Yeah, lost. You know, uh, when, when we were just starting the ministry, we taught these young people because uh, God, uh, by His grace, has led us to, to reach a lot of young people. Because there is a movie theater in our city, in the center of the city, that, um, it's a, it, that shows for, for pornography, okay? So, uh, and then they said, Pastor, well, how can we do that? We're passing there. Well, if you know this is the theater, okay? I told them, you have to cross the street and then walk there and then go back cross again. <laughs> if you are really serious with your Christian life, you know, they did it. <laughs> and I'm so happy for them. Okay, now in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, now, what are the works of the flesh? Now, the works of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. You know what I call the outbursts of anger? Mount Pinatubo, okay? <laughs> It's the biggest eruption of the volcano, okay? Selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar, about which I tell you in advance, as I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why do we need to overcome these things mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, the works of the flesh? So that the life of Jesus in us will grow into its fullness and be able to do the purposes of God through our lives. You know, God saved us, God created us, God called us, God saved us because he has given each one of us a destiny to fulfill here on earth to glorify him. Because he created us and he doesn't want us to miss our destiny. Do you want to miss your destiny? Of course not. Because when we, when we are able to fulfill that destiny, I tell you, I tell you, you will always see things around you beautiful. Amen. Amen. Even if you are sick, you see things beautiful. Even people around you are against you, you see things beautiful. How can that be, Pastor? Maybe you're, you're asking me. Even people that are ridiculous, you see things beautiful. <laughs> In Corinthians 13, it says, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is the love of God. As you pursue God, as you draw close to Him, you will learn to love Him above anything else in this world. Somebody shout at, shout at you. I'll just, I'll just smile. <laughs> because I know it's the flesh. The person is being ruled by his or her flesh. You know the outworking that is working in that person. Somebody cheat you and you just give it to Jesus. Of course, at first, there is pain. But as you go along with the Lord, He's the great healer. He's the only one that can feel that, that, that vacuum in your heart. And when He comes and possesses you, hallelujah, I like that possession. I love that possession. You will see all the things around you in the past, present, and future. Wonderful. You know why? Because you only trust a God that is so alive and true to his promise. And those who have trusted him, 
then surely you will never fail. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Okay. The purposes of the life of Christ in us is that we will become the expression of God here on earth. That we will be able to be used of God as his extension in reaching the lives of others. I repeat that. The purposes of the life of Christ in us is that number one, we will become the expression of God here on earth. That we will be able to be used of God as his extension in reaching the lives of others. In John 17, 17, okay, up to verse 26, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. This is Jesus, okay, praying to the Father saying, sanctify them, who is them, us. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself. Imagine Jesus said this. For our sake, he sanctified. He sanctified himself that they also might be sanctified through the truth the word of God neither neither pray I for this alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word not only these disciples father he said even the coming generations upon generations upon generations up to the last generation before I come hallelujah those who will believe, this is also my prayer for them. What a wonderful God we have. That they may all, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, Imagine Jesus, how much he loves us. First, he died for us. Now, he wants to share his glory to us. Hello? And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as you and me are one. As he is one with the Father, so let us also be one with Jesus and with the Father that we may carry the glory of God wherever we go in these last days that we can even affect the atmosphere, even the lives of the people around us. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is possible. I in them. So where is Jesus? In us. I in them. And thou in me. I am in them, but you, Father, are in me. So who is in us? The Father and Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, are in us. That they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. 24, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Yes, in the Father. In the Father. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Imagine. 
sharing his glory to us if if I will look at myself in the mirror God himself sharing his glory to me who am I I'm a weakling nothing that's why I stand in awe of him when you get to know about this you will never be the same. 25. O oh, righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known you. These Christians right now have known you. You have sent, has sent me, that thou sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. We can see here the power of the love of God. That's why, you know, his words are very true. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is the love of God. Who can go against the love of God? No one and nothing. Now, in order to become the expression of God here on earth, we need to let the light of Jesus shine in our lives that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We need to be the expression of the very life of Jesus working in and through us. They need to see that in our lives, that people will see Jesus in us, that we do not need sometimes to open our mouth. They will just sense the beauty of Jesus and they would say, I want what you have. What is in you? It is Jesus having his full expression through us and reaching the lives of people through our lives in full liberty. Why? Because we are fully subjected to his will that our life is being used by God to its fullest because His will is the one being done in our lives, not our own. That's why even we don't have to open our mouth, that glory from within, Jesus living in us because we are giving Him that full expression, liberty to move in us. It can reach people. It can affect the atmosphere. It can affect the lives of the people around us. We would just say, hi, imagine in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're hosting a conference, a revival conference. And somebody told me, oh, the pastors are coming. They're at the door, pastor, they said. So I went, I went to the lobby to greet them. I just said, hello, pastor, welcome. The moment I said, I said welcome, they all fell on the floor. And I said, it's the joy. It reached them and they fell. <laughs> then and only then can we be the expression of God here on earth. Giving him full expression. Not my will, but yours, Vita. Okay, number two, that we will be overcomers. In Revelation 12, 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb by the word of their testimony, and by not loving themselves even unto death. Okay, in that verse it says first, by the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? It means we need to stay in repentance. Just a, a small sin, abruptly we would repent. Don't let it stay. Okay, once the Holy Spirit convict you, Okay, once the Holy Spirit convict you, then repent. Say, I'm sorry, Jesus. I didn't mean it. Okay, and then by number two, by the word of their testimony. What does that mean? It means we need to stand as a witness of Christ. The witness of his life in us. It must be seen in our life, such as the fruit of the Spirit. What are the fruit of the Spirit? In Galatians 5, 22 to 26. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, and long-suffering, gentleness, 
goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, 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 like be big okay, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Okay, by not loving ourselves even unto death. A willingness to die to self. A willingness to deny ourselves of all things that does not please God. A willingness to live a separated life for the glory of God. We need to have an overcoming spirit. There are rewards of, of, of the overcomers. We need to become victorious Christians who are able to walk above the storms of life. Trusting. We have that living, living faith and living hope no matter what, even if we are in an impossible situation. Our faith must be so alive. Our hope must be so alive. They go together. Sometimes it's very hard for us to understand the dealings of God in our lives. Sometimes he permits trials, circumstances, troubles, problems, pains, discouragement, confusions, loss of directions. You become hopeless. You fail to trust God. Your faith is being shaken. You're at a loss. But all these are for a purpose. Amen. And you will see at the end, you became the person that God wants you to be. Even if you pass all these trials and you have overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit by trusting Him, by believing on Him, by having that living faith and hope that never dies in you. Because you know that you know that you know that the promise of God and the Word of God are powerful and they are so alive and they will come to us. Amen. You know, in Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, and to them who are called according to His purpose. Whatever you've gone through, all these things will work together for good according to the purpose of God. God permits all these things because He has a purpose. And one of these purpose is that we will be life-giving spirits. Mark that down. One of his purpose is that we will be life-giving spirits. In Psalm 84 verse 6 he says, Who through passing the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. What does this mean? This verse mean, you know, in the old times, when the Jews through the valley, okay, passed through the valley of Baca, they dig wells because this valley is so wide and it's so dry. So when, when, when the Jews will pass this valley, they have to dig wells because the purpose of these wells are for water. So that during the rainy season, these wells will be filled with water. So that those who will pass the valley after them, they will be able to drink water from these wells when they pass the valley. Now, what are these wells? These wells are our experience from the dealings of God in our lives. They are the lessons learned under the feet of Jesus. And as we learn to overcome these trials through the grace of God, we are gaining the life of Jesus in us and more of his life is being invested or imparted in our lives. And through our experiences, others will be able to drink the life of Jesus in us as we share to them these experiences. Then we will serve as a life-giving spirit to others. We will serve as what this these wells that they can drink from our experiences did you get that sense amen? amen 
so that we will be used by God for those who are experiencing what we have experienced before. Where people will drink from our experiences because if we are able to overcome such trials, it will result for, okay, to, to more of the life of Jesus in us. Then and only then can we be what life giving spirit. People will be drinking from our experiences in life. And that is the very life of Jesus. So that will be used for God for those who are experiencing what we have experienced before. People will drink from your experience because if we are able to overcome such trials, then it will result what to more of the life of Jesus in us. Then and only then can we be life-giving spirits. People will be drinking from our life. Now, where does all this lead us? Okay? It will lead us understanding his life in us. It will also lead us understanding the outworking of the body, the soul, and the spirit and how to be aware of that life and let it grow in maturity understanding the cross life dying to self being the expression of the life of Jesus here on earth having the overcoming spirit and being a life giving spirit what is the purpose of all this what are the purposes of our salvation what is the ultimate goal and purpose of our salvation? In John 17, 21, it says that they may be one as you, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe thou hast sent me. In Romans 8, 29, for whom he did for new, he also did predestinate to be changed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among brethren. In Ezekiel 47 verse 9, And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because this water shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whether the river cometh. In Hosea 6.3, it says, Then we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain and the former rain of the earth. In Zechariah 10.1, Ask ye of the Lord. Do you ask the Lord? Ask ye of the Lord rain. What is the rain? Revival. In the time of the latter rain. We are in the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Joel 2.28 And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit so all these verses that I have just read what are these verses trying to reveal to us it reveals to us the purposes of our salvation why God created us why God saved us okay it reveals to us the ultimate goal of our salvation do you know there are 18 purposes of salvation why God is preparing us here on earth? Why we need to be trained here on earth, being equipped for his divine purposes? But I will only share a few among the 18. Okay, one is the calling to be part of the bride of the Lamb. There's one calling in the kingdom the calling to be part of the bride of the Lamb. In Revelation 3, 4, Thou hast few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 22, 16, 17, I, Jesus, have sent 
mine angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. We jump in 17, and the spirit of the bride say come, and let him that heareth say come, and let him that is a thirst come. Whoever will let him take the water of life freely, come, come, come. You know, if you are thirsty, if you have hunger for God, you have that insatiable hunger in your heart for the Lord, you just cannot help it. You just want Jesus. You want Jesus. You, Jesus is always in your mind, okay? Jesus is always in your heart. Jesus is always the cry of your heart, you are part of the bride. Because the bride of Christ hungers for Christ. If you're not, then ask the Lord to give you the hunger. Hello? Amen. The calling to be part of the bride of the Lamb is the most important and most holy calling. It is a very high calling in the kingdom of God. The whole book of Song of Solomon can prove that. And in that book, it reveals how much Jesus loves his bride. She is the only one of her mother, meaning we are the focus of Jesus' attention. We are the apple of his eye. He loves his bride so much. He loves us so much. I have loved thee even before the foundation of the world. We are not born yet. We are nothing yet. God has planned us and has loved us. We have been chosen by God even we did not exist yet. Yet he has loved us and gave himself for us because he is looking for a bride that would love him beyond anything else in this world. Do we have that kind of love for the Lord? You know, every time I recall his love, I cannot help it. There's something within me that cries so much hunger for him. And I'm praying she would cry for that hunger for God. Now who are these people called to be part of the bride of the Lamb? These are the people who have unquenchable thirst for God. They are so hungry. Last night, you know, I did not sleep because I'm so hungry. I could see our bedroom filled with the mist. I'm telling my husband, something is happening in our room. I said, it's filled with the glory of God. In, in Psalms 84 verse 2, it says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. This is the cry of the bride. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. These are people who are not after anything else but God. They just want God. You can do everything you, you need to do to them. You cannot change their mind. They are sold out to Jesus. They are not after position, fame, or popularity. They are not after money, wealth, or riches. They're not after ambition, accomplishments, or success. They are after God himself. They run after God. They hunger and thirst after God in seeking him alone, doing his will, not their own will, but the will of God being done in their lives for the glory of his name. In Proverbs 27, 7, but, the, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing becomes sweet. Even they are in an impossible situation, a hard situation. All 
all these situations are nothing to them because they become sweet. This situation will turn them to focus and hunger for God more. The bride of the Lamb doesn't care where God puts him or leads him, whether in blessing or trials, in ups and downs, in forwards or backwards. The bride is only after where God wants her for that moment of time. Because for her, even the most painful experience can be turned into sweetness, joy of the Lord. Why? Because she is so much in love and so much in love with Jesus. That is why it says in Proverbs 27, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing becomes sweet. Oh, sweet Jesus. We have been through a lot in lives, in our lives. But you know what? I don't even feel the pain. The calling to be part of the vehicle of the end time revival, and I will finish here. This is, this is the one, the last one I will share. In book, it is described in Ezekiel, Hosea, Zechariah, and Joel. There will be a tremendous double portion outpouring of the Spirit of God upon the earth in these last days. God, remember, God will not share his glory to another. He will not share his glory to anyone. He is preparing for a people. These are people whom God has prepared for the latter rain revival. These people have been tested, beaten by trials and testings. They have learned their lessons well. They have been broken, stayed in repentance and humility so that when the time comes for the outpouring, no one will be exalted and be lifted except the name of Jesus Christ. No more revivals just like in the past. That revival are being named under the name of a person or a place. No. But it will be a revival under the anointing and direction of the powerful spirit of God. Using these men and women who have been broken, humbled, and stayed in repentance. They have learned their lessons well. All they want is that glory be given alone to Jesus Christ. These men have nothing to be proud of. They only boast on the name of Jesus and what the Lord has done for them. All they want and care about is Jesus. The cry of their heart, the very heartbeat of their soul is Jesus alone. They love the Lord more than anything else in this world. They have so much passion in their hearts for Jesus that no one or nothing can stand in their way or between God and them. They are only for Jesus. What is the ultimate goal and purposes of salvation? It is image and union. They want to be so one with the Lord. This is the ultimate goal and purpose of our salvation. That's why this is the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 17. It says that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the Lord may know the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me God wants to be one with us and God wants us to be one with his son to be united in him so that he will be given preeminence in our life that he will be the one seated in the throne of our hearts, not ourselves, not ourselves, not the enemy, but the full rulership of Christ in our hearts without the usurping of the throne of Christ in our hearts. I'm closing. He will be all in all. He will be the Lord of Lords. He will be the King of Kings. 
He will be the one directing and ruling our lives. He will, he will, his will being done in our lives. A oneness, a completeness, a fulfillment of the transformation of his image and the union of our soul with him. What a union. What a marriage. What oneness. Oneness. It is Christ in you and in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Can we rise, please? Until we will become a mountain of fire. Okay. Before we end, just want to ask you one thing. This message is not easy. It's not easy. It requires all of us, all of you, body, soul, and spirit, all of us, to be totally be surrendered and be made one with him. He gave all his all to us. Every drop of that blood cries out, saying, I love you. I created you. I'm waiting for you to be one with me. Every drop of that blood. When I recall this, I cannot stop it but cry before. But only every drop, every breath. Now, how will we respond to the calling of God in our lives? How will we respond? If God has saved you in an impossible situation, He did that because that drop of blood of his blood upon you of his love for you how many hard situation that God has answered and saved us you know that now are you willing are you willing to give you life are you willing Surrender all that you have in exchange of that life. Are you willing to love him above anything else in this world? Okay. As the worship team are singing, if God has spoken to you, and if you want to commit your life to him totally and love him above anything else, can you go up front? If you need to kneel down or if you just want to, to stand and raise your hand, just tell him, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I think God deserves the best. Amen. Can we come here with this and surrender to the Lord? Thank you, Lord. He is waiting. He's a God that loves. He loves us so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are so good. We love you, Lord. Love you above anything else.